Hey, hello everyone. So this is number four of our Matchbox series and I'm Yulik and I'm sitting here with Joel Osis all the way from Sydney. Hey, and everybody. we're picking up where Hi man. <laughs> and we're picking up from where we left uh, last time with uh, making our Matchbox shaders and in this in, in this uh, uh, part we're going to look at how you actually get at values coming into your Matchbox shader from say a batch input. So um, first of all we're going to look First of all, we're going to introduce another uh, magic variable. Uh, like I said, um, uh, uh, GLSL uses a number of magic variables uh, for, for doing what it's doing. For example, there is one variable that we assign to, which is gl underscore frag color. And that's the color of the pixel that our shader is rendering uh, at the moment. But we also have a couple of uh, variables that we can read from okay and uh, this is something we're going to look at uh, right now so first of all uh, we're going to create a new um, we're going to create a new shader so I'm just going to say make me a new file and I'm going to save it under the name uv.glsl okay yep uh, and shortly you're gonna you're gonna see why I'm calling it uv so I'm going to grab the same uh, void main thingy and make the type real big. Okay, now um, there is uh, there is a variable which are, which is used in pretty much any GLSL shader uh, that does some some processing of the image that's coming into it. And this variable is a very important one, and it's called GL fragment coordinate, which is GL frag cord. Okay, this one. And the GL frag cord is a read only variable, uh, which means that we cannot uh, change the values contained in it, we can only read them. So, for example, if so I'm going to so purely I, based on the input image coming in uh it's no not exactly it's based on the canvas uh that you're rendering so um wait a second this is got this will, will, will have to be edited away sweet I know that's sweet, but I, I I've put this I've put I've put this bugger on. Yeah, it went off by itself. Okay, <laughs> so uh, let's try again. Um, yeah, this variable is actually read only. So um, if we yeah, and this variable, uh, gl frac coordinate, as far as I remember, it's a vec two. So if we try to write into it, like we say dot x y equals Vec to and then of zero. And then we're going to run our test shader on that. And say test shader UV GLSL. You see, it says left hand side of assignment must not be read only. Okay, so we're okay. not we're not allowed to assign values to the X and Y. We're we're not allowed to assign to the GL frac coordinate. It's just there for us to do our uh, to do our uh, to do our thing. Uh, and what this uh, what this thing contains is actually the offset of the pixel that you are rendering at the moment. So uh, the easiest way to find out what it does is to actually grab this GL frac color, GL frac coordinate x y, or just the whole GL frac coordinate for that matter, because it's a vec two anyway. And uh, what we're going to do is first we're going to set our GL frac color RGBA to black. And the reason I'm going to do this is so that we don't get garbage in the uh, in the blue channel because we only have two values X and Y coming in, mm -hmm. but we have to fill a vec four and. Uh, one of the things that you can do in a GLSL shader, and we're going to see that used specifically in the um, in the Boxbuilder example, is that you can actually write 
to that pixel value multiple times, okay? So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to sort of blank it out with black, which we're going to do like so, okay? Yep. And if we check that, then it's going to work. Yeah, it's outputting the XML, which means it's correct. And we can actually remove that even because it's already a VEC4 on the right-hand side of the assignment. Again, it's correct, so that's all good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say glfragColor.rj. And um, this thing is a VEC2 at this point already. So these two slots can accept a VEC2. So we then don't need to say, assign anything and say VEC2? Well, well, no, no, we don't have to because the GL fragment coordinate is based on VEC2. Is a VEC2. Okay. It, it, is, it, it is a VEC2. And that should, I think this should just work. No, it doesn't. So it contains more values. So we have to do this. So we have to pull a VEC2 from here and stuff it into a VEC2 in here. Mm. Yeah, so that works. Yep. And now let's load that shader. Which popped. Then here we got one called UV. I'm gonna load it. And when we look at it, it has this weird yellow color all over it. But the funny thing is that Remember, we used the color corrector last time to sample the values in the um, in the shader output. So now we're gonna just let me grab uh, my uh, my pen. Now we're gonna do the same, and uh, we're gonna scan the canvas. Looks like something is broken. I think it's because it's got a float. Because basically what's happening is that these values are at one. Yeah. So the and they and, bit, and they yeah. yeah and they and they clip to the uh, they clip to the uh, to the integer. I think actually, if we if we make a floating point, if we make a floating point, it should default to the the uh, the connect default. effects res. Yeah, it will probably default to the. To the floating point connect effects pipe. This is 16 FP. Let's try that again. Is that with most of the Matchbox filters, or it depends? Well, the like the 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 thing is is that um, it is pretty much with all of them because all the colors that you operate on in OpenGL are floats. Uh, so what happens is um, flame. Uh, does some uh, operations which are not, for example, to me, it's not uh, exactly clear what it does and when mm -hmm. to to kind of uh, coerce your your integer comps into floats so that they can be fed to Matchbox and then converts them back to integer once it comes out. See, this one is yeah. Then let's try to sample it. And also, this has to do with the obviously. This has to do with the choice of the uh, of the processing engine that you have in in Flame. So, if you choose Flame Reactor, it's probably going to be all float right off the bat. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but this one this one is also float. And if you sample it, we got different values from before. You're going to see that you that you get different values, and um, as you can see, the R and J actually change from the lower left corner nothing in blue though yeah to the upper right yeah nothing in blue that's why it's so yellow okay because basically if, as as far as the visible colors are concerned uh we have one in uh red and we have one in green and we have zero in blue so that's why it looks yellow is that, is that because uh, it's a uv shader or, or, or uh, it's not. it's because it's because it's because it uses floating uh, floating point color values to their uh, to their maximum. So basically, it uh, increases the color value by one every time it traverses the next pixel in the raster. Okay. So if you if we go right over here, 
and we sample the, the pixel values one by one, you will see that if we sample up, then the value of the green channel, which is the Y coordinate of the, of the frag coordinate Y increases by one. You see it's jumping 21.5, yep. yep. 22.5, 23.5, and so on. If we sample to the right, then you see it going 2.5, 3.5, the red channel is changing to 4.5, 5.5, etc. Okay, that makes sense. So we can't, yeah. obviously we can't go back because B would be Z, essentially. Yeah, yeah, it would be. But the most important thing is that like the best way to see what it, what's actually going on is if we just grab the gain and we take it down big time. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to see this thing turning into a UV map. Okay. You see, so if we go, yep. if we if we uh, click the if we set the gain to one, and if we click it and we say that we want to go in very small increments, like of one hundred, like so, and then we type zero, we, we type point zero one in here, and we press the arrow to the left and to the right, then you will see that there is a gradient appearing in here, which absolutely looks like a UV map. You see? Yep, definitely. And uh, if you look at this thing, if you look at this thing per channel, then you're going to see that the red channel actually contains a gradient which goes from left to right, which is our x coordinate, mm -hmm. and it shows us how the how this value is changing throughout the 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 the, the raster that we're rendering, and the green channel contains the same but in y, okay. Would would that would that would this output change if in your in your um your GSSL uh file you change it because right now you have it as X Y would it change if you change it to X Y Z or is that is that completely different? Uh well I don't remember exactly what the what the fragment coordinate contains for the Z value but we might just as well check that we can say R G B equals X Y Z from the frag coordinate. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna check that. There is there is a lot of there is a lot of stuff that I never that I never used. Uh, this is one of this is one of them. Log that in. Okay, so it still looks like the same behavior well, as before. It's, it contains zero point five basically. This, the 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 third component of the um, so the it's third like, component of the of the of the frag co fragment coordinate. It's so it's static though, really. It's well. It's static as far as far as I remember. They the, there is kind of a kind of a kind of a chance that uh, that this uh, thing might end, might might end up being used for like things like volumetric shaders. Okay. But yeah. for us, is it's of it's of no use whatsoever. That's okay. why that's why I said that you're generally going to be using the the X Y component anyway. Okay. Uh, now, why am I touching on that? Like like I said in the if we go back to our omnipresent blackboard uh, like I said when you're rendering a pixel uh, you have access to its output color and you also know where uh, this pixel is located in the picture that you are rendering now the 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 fra the, the fragment coordinate uh, variable that you can read from it contains these two numbers basically okay yeah so it shows you where the pixel that you're rendering is located at the moment, and that um, uh, variable is uh, being used a lot for doing anything that's dependent on the placement of the of the color that you want to render into your pixel. Which is to say that it basically you end up using it everywhere. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, the first thing that we're gonna have to look at is um in um okay this this is our old one this one i'm gonna i'm gonna call this shader 8-bit and this one i'm gonna call shader 16 fp because it's going to be much easier for us to to look at the values when they don't get truncated automatically to uh, to uh, to the um, to the eight bit color. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing that we're gonna we're go we're gonna have to do, and I'm gonna I'm going to explain why we ha absolutely have to do this, is uh, 
as you can, as you remember, when we've made this UV thingy, uh, it basically uh, gave us a uh, a number of absolute values for the uh, uh, for the pixel coordinate that we're rendering. So if we walk it like this, then you will see that these values change in in absolute increments. So basically, going to the right by one pixel increases the, the, the red value by one and going up by one pixel increases the green value by, by one. Yep. But uh, this is not a UV map in a traditional sense because when we have a UV map, uh, we are in general going from zero to one, right? Yep, yep. So the first thing that we're gonna, we're gonna do here is we're going to normalize this output by the uh, by the size of our canvas, uh, so that it out so that instead of like this one, for example, it's got a canvas resolution at 1080, which we means need to that clamp it, it, kind of thing. Yeah. Well, we're not gonna clamp it because if we clamp it, then it's all gonna be uh, or it's all gonna be one. Okay. In all the channels, what we need to do is we need to proportionally divide it so that instead of going from uh, z from 0 0.5 to 1920 yep. in red, it would go from 0 to 1, okay? Okay. So we just need to change the, the proportion of that, uh, of that uh, thing. And uh, for this, we need to make use of the so-called Autodesk uniforms. And the Autodesk uniforms is something that is used uh, a lot in flame-specific uh, matchbox shaders. So these are the things that you are only going to be using in 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 your matchbox shaders for uh, flame and smoke. And you can read about them again in test shader dash dash help. And we're gonna push them into more again. So is is this the equivalent of like a I guess a JavaScript if if or else statement? Where you clamp something, or, or where you define uh, values? No, 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 we're, no, that's not that's not exactly what we're going to be what we're going to be doing. Uh, it's a, a bit of patience, and you will know uh, you will know you will know what how how we're going to do it. Sure. Like there is a in the help file, there is a section that you should dedicate a little bit of attention to. Uh, it's called ADSK uniforms, and these are the uniforms which you can use in your shader code, which are specific to the Matchbox system. And uh, the first one, like, here you go. The following float uniforms are unconditionally sent to each pass. Developers can use them as usual, which means that there is, uh, there are uh, uh, magic uniforms available to you that you can that you can use to do some uh, computation, which is dependent on the context. So, for example, uh, you what you can get is you can get the current uh, frame number. Uh, so that you can, for example, use your matchbox shader to generate time-dependent noise stuff. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing, and the thing we're going to grab first, is this one. Uh, it's called the ADSK result W and ADSK result H. So uh, the result W and the result H... Is that width and height? That's width and height of your canvas. That's okay. these two. These two babies. They get sent to you in uh, in these in these uniforms. And the important thing to know is that um, uh, if uh, if you just grab for that value uh, by name, so let's say we wanna we wanna put it into the blue channel. So B equals ADSK result W, and then the semicolon. Likely it will complain. You see? Meh. Use of an undeclared identifier. Uh, it will complain because you still have to mention these uniforms at the beginning of your shader. So you do have to say Okay, because otherwise this variable is not going to be, uh, it's, it's not going to exist in, until you uh, declare the, it. it. Until you declare it, yeah. But okay. once you declare it, it's going to exist and it's going to contain the value of the, uh, of the, canvas, uh, of the canvas width in, in pixels. 
funny thing is that it is that it's a float because I would I would I don't exactly understand why you need to have floating point pixel widths, but okay, whatever. And then we say test shader. You say it gives us an XML, so that's fine. And now if we load that shader again, then we're going to see that it's all white now, which makes sense because we, for for the most part, we have values which as which are wildly above one. But if we sample it in our color correct, again, as you can see, the blue channel is nineteen twenty. Okay, so it's it's giving the width. Yeah, yeah. It's give it's giving us the width, and the same thing with the height. Load it again. And it should be 1080. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Okay. So uh, since we have this as uh, the absolute pixel coordinate, and we have this as the width and the height, all we need to do is a simple division to uh, uh, to get at the values normalized to uh, zero one space okay so we're gonna we're gonna assign our B to black so that it doesn't uh, doesn't distract us okay and when we do things like that I usually leave little notes Okay. Yep. And then uh, uh, we can uh, do these. Basically, we can do these assignments uh, by component, and that's what that's what we're gonna start with uh, to make it simple. So we're gonna say that we want the red to be. So we know that we we know that we we've got our fragment coordinate of x. Right, which is one float, mm -hmm. and then we know that it's gonna be uh, it's going to be less than this variable. So basically, what we what we want to do is we want to we want to figure out the ratio between the between the result w and the and the x. Uh, so all we have to do is we got to grab this record x. I'm not very good at math, uh, so forgive me if I make mistakes. And then we divide it by the by the ADSK result W. Okay. Note that I'm typing this shit out. I'm not I'm not using autocomplete uh, just uh, specifically to make a point because the, these things are useful to memorize and you memorize them much much quicker if you if you really type them out by repetition, yeah. copy pasting it. And the same thing we're gonna do for the G. So we're gonna go frag coordinate y and then autodesk result h okay now i'm going to check this yeah it compiles and now let's grab that shader into smug yeah and there you get your basically a uv map now it's visible because if we measure it then you're going to see that all the values actually go from so, so that UV map you could use as an actual UV map, say with PF match it or something like that for lens. Totally, you can, totally you can just you can just render if we, you can basically the output of that shader you can just render it out, and that's and, a proper uh, proper UV map. Yeah, and you can also use it with uh, you can also use it with uh, action if you want to because action does uh, action does UV mapping as well. But it's a yeah, it's a proper UV it's a proper UV map with uh, with a very uh, with a very exact linear uh, transition from zero to one. Cool. Only I don't I don't remember exactly which which has to be which. I think I think your I think your uh, red is going to be X. Like your 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 red is gonna be U and your green is gonna be um it's gonna be V, but uh so that's uh that's how we normalize the uh, that's how we normalize this this coordinate. So to recap, now we can we actually have access to the uh, to the coordinate of the specific pixel that we are rendering, 
and we are now using the Autodesk result W and the result H uh, to normalize that value into zero to one space. So for this, it's actually very useful to get to our blackboard again, because that's a very important concept in general for, um, for uh, uh, Matchbox related stuff. It's that, uh, oops. Oh, it just clones my, uh, it's my drawing. So, uh, like the GL frac chord, it goes from zero to the height and from zero to the width. Okay. Is this, is this dependent on um, whether it's float or integer as well? Or it uh, doesn't matter? It's guaranteed to contain uh, floats. Okay. It's guaranteed to contain floats and the, 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 that value is going to be, is going to be converted to, to float for you. Cool. Uh, and um, these are going to be the canvas width and the canvas height. And the zero starts at, at the lower left corner. Okay, as yep. opposed to say action coordinates which start in the middle. So it's just like a a a, a LUT, really. Mm, well, in 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 a way, in a way, or, or the, like a, a basic linear a linear curve for for yeah white to yeah. Black. Well, it's yeah, it's just two it's just two values, one going up and the other going to the right. But the most important thing is that these go in absolute pixels. Okay, but uh, most of the time, when you're going to be um, when you're going to be uh, reading some input, uh, you are going to be using the zero to one uh, coordinates. So these are x y, and let's call them x y coordinates. Mm -hmm. But when you need to grab some uh, some uh, some values from one of your inputs you're going to be using something called st coordinates okay and that's some that's a thing that trips people up and rightfully so and the st coordinates are something that we have generated with this normalized uv map so the so st coordinates they go from 0 to 1 okay independently of how big your image is the ST coordinates will always uh, will always go from also on the lo lower lower left corner, but they will go from zero to one. And when you grab uh, a pixel from your input, which is exactly what we're going to do uh, shortly, you have to use this coordinate system and not the absolute x y coordinates. Okay, okay. and uh, most of the time you're going to be converting. From this one to that one, and that's why you need to uh, you need this uh, you need the the to know the size of the image that you're rendering into uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, normalize these coordinates. Okay, uh, there is a little caveat in that uh, when you have images going into your uh, into your Matchbox shader, uh, the um, test shader program is going to tell you that you also if we go to the we're just going to scroll a little bit duplicate uniforms and Autodesk uniforms okay now this uh, the 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 um, the help for uh, for the test shader is going to tell you that you can actually get at the sizes of the of your inputs here okay yeah says when declared as float uniform this gives access to each texture's resolution well uh the i uh, it's very sad to disappoint you but it doesn't it's actually broken and it's been broken for i think a couple of years no it's, it's been broken so basically since the uh, the flame anniversary edition and smoke 2013 has been broken 
they promise that they're going to fix this in the next major release, but the, the sad thing is that you cannot rely on knowing the pixel size of your input textures. And this is this is referring to the the, the kind of workaround that happens with your silence filter as well, right? Yeah, that's why that's why when you're using silence, you have to enter the the size of your input texture by hand. So it doesn't auto detect. So it's yeah, it's broken. Yeah, that's okay. the that's the thing. And uh, uh, basically, the w what we're going to assume for our use case at this time is we're just going to assume that our input texture and our output texture are of the same size to make it simple. Okay. Yeah. And if you read the um, uh, the uh, source code of the Autodesk Matchbox shaders, which ship with the software, like the the Z Glow, for example, or the halftone uh, generator thingy, or the noise, mm -hmm. you're going to see that they that they are only ever using these two. Okay, they're always using uh, uh, the uh, the the canvas width and the canvas height. So that's also what we what we are going to. Uh, use and here I'm going to make a note that we'll have to do a conversion. Okay. Okay, so this this is where we this is where we get into the box blur, right? Uh this is first this is where we get to the gain if you don't mind. Okay. Which we have which we have which we have discussed uh which we have discussed uh at the beginning. If we get to the If we get to back to our drawings for this, mm -hmm. you can see that here we have this example where we have main, okay, and we have the RGB values which we sample, okay, mm -hmm. and then we grab those RGB values, we multiply them by the gain, and we add the, the lift. And we assign that to the magic variable for output RGB. Now, in the meantime, we know how the variable for output RGB is called. It's our GL underscore frag color uh, vector four that we use all the time to assign the values. We know that this is likely to be a vec three. Okay. Yeah. The only thing that we know about the uniforms. So now this makes sense as well. Like the uniform gain is going to be uniform float gain and uniform float lift. Mm -hmm. Um. The only thing that we don't know is this baby right here. And this is how you actually grab the image that's coming into your uh, Matchbox shader for processing and how you uh, how you address its pixels. Yeah. Uh, to be able to sample stuff, like again, we're going to copy that code and we're going to make yet another GLSL file, which we're going to call lift gamma gain. Okay, I'm going to place it in the same tab, also make it nice and big. We're going to paste the code. Okay, so we know uh, that we're going to need uh, these two babies. Okay. Yep. And uh, also, we're going to need to have an input. Okay. Um, we're, uh, the input meaning uh, we want like here in our previous example with the UV map, our shader has inputs here, but having them attached or not attached doesn't do anything because you see input configuration is empty yep. and having them attached or not having them attached doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Now, what we need to, uh, what we need to do to actually have us an input that is working is we're going to have a uniform, which is going to be, I think, sampler 2D. And it's going to be our input one. Uh, I'm just going to double check if that's indeed the name. Because this is something I haven't done for a little while. And what's, what's, um, what does sampler 2D refer to? Uh, I'm going to explain that in a minute. A second. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually sampler 2D, but spelled like this. Okay. And sa sampler 2D refers to refers to a texture input. 
uh, a texture input in the matchbox uh, in the matchbox uh, shader uh, context is one of those inputs on one of those tabs, okay? Mm -hmm. Because all it does from the GLSL uh, shader uh, perspective is it provides you with a texture. For example, it will provide you with a texture that's coming on this input here. Okay. Okay. If we make a colored frame. And uh, we're going to make it uh, just color noise, okay? And we connect it to the first input uh, tab of the matchbox shader. Then it means that that whatever is generated by this colored frame here is coming in as a texture for GLSL to to read and to uh, to read and to process. But it's not going to be arriving before we actually tell the matchbox subsystem, okay, we want to accept. Um, we want to accept uh, the matchbox input as a texture. Okay. Once we say sampler two D, you can you can consider sampler two D as a sort of a as a sort of a reference to something. Okay. So it's it's basically a reference to the texture. It's not some value that you can print or visualize in terms of like two float values or or something like that. It's it's it represents the whole of the input texture that you're working with. Okay. And uh, if you're only using one input, then you're going to have one sampler 2D for that input. If you're using two, then you're going to have two of them, etc. Uh, as far as I know, the way that you name them here, it doesn't matter that much because at the end of the day, uh, Flame just uh, links them to your, uh, to your uh, batch input tabs one by one in in the order as they're declared so we can keep this one and then we're gonna say test shader yeah it says compiling shaders and that's okay uh, and the first thing that we're going to that we're going to do obviously, is we're just going to make sure that we can copy the input image into our output, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, to do that, what we have to do is we have to sample our, um, we have to sample our input texture. What sampling means is this, uh, you You have a um, texture available to you somewhere, which is a sampler to D. And it's just hanging there in, in, in space. And it contains some, uh, some pixels. And you are doing your processing. And imagine you're sitting at a you're sitting at a desk and doing some doing some stuff with those um, with those values and uniforms that you have scattered on your sort of blackboard. Now, if you need to grab values from the input, what you have to do is you have to actually sort of walk to the place where the sampler three D is, and you have to climb that, climb a kind of a little ladder, and you have to reach out to that sampler 2D, and you have to sample a pixel value, say, from here. Okay, what I'm implying by the fact that you have to walk here and climb that ladder is that uh, sampling from your input texture is actually something that takes time in GLSL. This is the slow, the slow, the slowest operations in a GLSL shader are likely to be sampling related, okay? So every time you have to walk over here and sample a pixel value, it costs you something in terms of time because you have to stand up and you have to walk, you have to climb that ladder and you have to grab a pixel and you address the pixel that you're going to be having uh, by its ST coordinates. So you say, for example, I want a pixel at 0 0.3 and 0 0.5. And then the OpenGL subsystem is going to say, okay, you want a pixel at 0 0.3, 0 0.5, so I'm going to 
count out 0.3 on x and I'm going to count out a 0.5 on y. Here is your pixel and then it's going to give you the RGB value for that pixel which you put in a box and carry it back to your desk to do something useful too, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, the very basic thing that we can do in the Matchbox shader is just do a bypass. So we'll say, um, please give us the RGB value of the input and we'll just put it in the output, okay? Uh, the way you do this is uh, by uh, using uh, something called uh, texture 2D. So a texture texture 2D is a function uh, which gives you uh, which gives you as far as I know a vec3 or a vec4. Uh, it's written like so. Okay. And that's the function that you use to actually perform, perform a sample from this sampler 2D object, which is your input texture. Yeah. Uh, and to get, and to get a, 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 a um, to get an RGB value, which is packed into a vector. So, uh, here we know how to normalize our, uh, our ST values. Okay. So we can actually say that we're going to have a vec2 and we're going to call it st okay and then we're going to assign st.x which is the same as st.r to the normalized zero to one coordinate in our canvas and st.y is going to be normalized y coordinate in our canvas okay mm -hmm. and then all we have to do is we have to say I think texture 2D and then in the call for texture 2D the first uh, the first argument is going to be input 1 which is the name of the texture uniform that we're sampling from yeah right and the second one is going to be this ST vector which contains the X and Y okay and then we need to uh, we need to store it in our output buffer. So we need to write it out to the pixel that we are processing, uh, and we're just going to use our old friend frac color, and we're just going we're going to try to to assign it as a whole uh, and see whether the, the the shader will complain. No, it won't. As you see, it compiles, and if we look at the XML code that it generates for us, then you will see that it creates us a uniform called input one, and you get a whole lot of spe special attributes for that, and the type is sampler 2D. And um, if you load this XML into uh, into your into your connect effects and it's this one okay then you're going to see that its input is the same as its output which means that's that we're now uh, basically transferring whatever is coming into the, on the, into yep. the input that we're transferring it into the into the output Okay, that's the that's the most basic matchbox shader, which is doing some processing. And uh, if we want some uh, lift and gain, then uh, yeah, the, the the most important thing to 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 note is the following: like imagine that we didn't do this normalization thingy. Okay, imagine that we said, oh, we actually want to just sample from. Uh, we should we just we're just going to sample using the GL frag fragment coordinate x y. We are not going to use the result w, or the result h, and all that jazz. We're just going to do this. Okay. Yep. Imagine that that you would be going for that. Well, you will be disappointed to see that it will sample one pixel and fill your entire result with one pixel. Okay. Because 
because this thing is, as far as I know, the first pixel of the color noise. It's one of the pixels somewhere here, basically. Okay. Yeah. And so it takes that pixel and it just happily fills your, uh, it happily fills your entire, your entire canvas with that with that value. So that that that's why we need to do this uh, this coordinate conversion. And you will see that uh, coordinate system conversion going on in pretty much any matchbox shader. So now all we need to do to transform this into a kind of a bare bones color corrector is first of all since we're really uh, kind of uh, OCD on that, we're going to go to, we're going to go to mother Google and we're going to say lift gamma gain order of operations because we need to be like really, really, really nice. And then we're gonna look into that stuff where, where Cafe. You know what? I think we'll just write it and then we'll see what happens. Goodbye. <laughs> so um, we're, first we're going to have our lift. Okay. We're going to have our gain. And um, here is actually a funny thing with, uh, uh, with, um, vector values in general, and spe specifically in GLSL. Um, as you probably remember, if you have a vector, say with three values, like x, y, and z, you actually have a very simple operation for multiplying it by a single value, like by a scalar. Like if we multiply this vector by, say, capital A, or no, not like this. Let's say we have a vector of two, three, and five, and we're going to multiply it by six, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very simple operation, which is called vector scalar multiplication is this a, a magic variable no it's it's with it's in general with any vector just in terms of math what's happening okay and and what that and what that thing will do is it's going to give you another vector which is going to be each component multiplied by that value uh, so it's going to be 2 multiplied by 6 which is going to give us 12 yep. and it's going to be 3 multiplied by 6 which is going to give us 18 and it's going to be 5 multiplied by 6 which is going to be 30 okay mm -hmm. and uh, GLSL uh, defines this operation which means that in GLSL you can do for example a vec4 and then use a star to multiply and then multiply it by a float okay and that's and that will work so so by multiplying it is it converting it to float is that what you mean uh what i what i mean is that it's going to give you another vec4 which is going to contain the values from the original vec4 and each one of these values is going to be multiplied by that float that you pass in okay, okay. what i yep. what i want to say is that uh, there is uh, there is uh, uh, there is a defined operation in GLSL which basically does vec3 or vec4 or whatever multiplied by a float. It's basically the same thing as saying. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, it's basically the same thing as creating one. Um, is creating a new a, a new vector of the same uh, of the same uh, dimension with each component multiplied by that by that float okay that's what that's that's what I'm getting at and why I'm getting at at it is that we can actually do this so here we have an RGBA value coming in as a result of the texture 2d uh, sampling operation yep. now all we have to do to apply gain to it is actually this Okay, 
that's why I'm saying that's why I'm explaining this concept of uh, concept of uh, vector scalar multiplication so that you don't get surprised that you can actually grab a vec4 and multiply it by a float and it still works that makes sense that's why uh, that's that that's why I was getting at it specifically and also since we have um, since we have uh, lift I think we might as well just add some lift to that but this in turn might not work so let's run the test again yeah it works and uh, in this case lift should be um, in this case lift should be basically the same as saying grab me a vec4 and fill it with all, with uh, fill it with this uh, with this single float on all yeah. the slots okay now let's load this into our shader 16 now as you can see it's really black and uh, it's black because our default gain and default lift is zero but if we've done our homework and once we drag on the gain you can see our color appearing okay and if we do some lift yeah, hello and you can see that we are applying lift to that so uh if we but for this we could really use a better we could really use a better picture so if we go so if we go and grab a picture of joe receiving the flame award <laughs> but it's not it doesn't work all the way to the schematic so we can do it like so see here we got joel smiling at us i'm smiling on the inside <laughs> okay totally <laughs> so and now we're gonna we're gonna pipe him to the uh to the output then as you can see it's a bit squashed it's because we're using the hd output so and it's uh, based on canvas and race. He is, yeah and he is uh, 640 bar 480 uh but we can also say canvas res same as input one and then when we start somehow it's getting sticky this UI. i think this might be a mavericks uh, thing kids don't use uh, mavericks with smoke 2013 uh you have been warned if we drag the gain then you can see that we're gaining joel up and down and uh you even get these nice blooming thingies because it just basically stays float all the way so you can um so you can just if we go and measure it so and again so it's... like you were talking about before, if we if we wanted the default value for gain to be one, that's as easy as just going into the XML associated well, for... with this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the the first thing we'd need to do is we need to create the XML because now we don't have any, it's just using the it's just using the defaults, okay? Yeah, the compiler that Autodesk spits out for you from that program, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, basically what 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 ends up being what ends up being used if you don't have an xml file is that whatever that this that shader application generates for you okay okay that's what that, that's what ends ends up being used by default does it is that is that a file that it spits out though or is that just literally just something that gives you as a starting point for your xml well uh it uh it spits out uh text so that that's that's actually kind of a funny thing it's that uh see if you run the test shader Mm -hmm. then it prints you out compiling shaders and then it prints you out this xml code that you can copy and paste now normally with a, a decently developed uh, piece of unix software yeah. which you should be able to do yeah is to uh output uh the that whatever that this test shader uh, executable prints for you to the standard output and just write it to say lift gamma gain dot xml yeah yeah like in 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 theory at least now the funny thing is that when you do this you don't get any output 
which means that when we open that file, which is this one mm -hmm. that we've just written, here you will see compiling shaders, and this actually invalidates the XML and makes it makes it uh, unusable. Okay, so that's why you do the copy paste into a new one. So, so that's why I do a copy paste into a new one. It's extremely annoying and absolutely ridiculous, and I got no idea why anybody would develop it in this way. Whatever. <laughs> uh, but 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 the basic thing is that when you don't have the more important point that I'm trying to make is that if you don't have um, if you don't have an XML file defined then Flame ends up sort of generating the UI, which looks just like what's described in here. So that's the default, okay? Yeah. And uh, if you don't have an XML file, you can assume that the UI is going to be generated in exactly the way that that shader prints it out for you. Okay. That's what I was trying to say. So now that we've got this uh, gain example and the lift example all working, uh, I think we can take a little break and next uh, thing we'll do a blur.